Ever since Google decided to stop supporting ActiveSync, I've struggled to find a good Gmail solution on iOS. Google's own Gmail app is full-featured, but it's painfully slow. There are other apps that have improved on the Gmail experience, but they ignore Exchange Gmail in the process. If you work in a corporate environment, chances are you need both. I'm happy to report that that struggle ends today. This is Outlook by Microsoft for iOS. It's not the full-featured Outlook that you'd find on a PC or a Mac, but what it does have to offer are a wonderful combination of all the best email features I've been looking for. First, I'd like to demonstrate its best feature, and that's its speed. In order to be a good email app, it has to be responsive. Even from a completely closed state, the app launches very quickly. This is huge when compared to the Gmail app from Google. Most good email apps incorporate swiping to make managing your email easier. Even the native email app on iOS does this in iOS 8. However, the swipes are very limited. In Outlook, I prefer to have my swipes set to archive and delete. A full swipe to the right will archive the message. Because this is the first time I've archived a message on this device, it needs to know if it should create an archive folder to store the message in or use an existing folder. I already have an archive folder called All Mail, so I'll choose that one. All subsequent swipes to the right will now immediately archive the message. A full swipe to the left moves the message to the trash can. In the Android version, Microsoft chose to implement different actions for partial swipes versus full swipes, much like the native email app on iOS. However, the iOS version of Outlook doesn't appear to support that. Going to the Settings tab, we can see all the swipe options we have available. First, choose the direction you want to swipe, and then you're given a choice to either do nothing, archive, delete, schedule, move, mark as read or unread, and flag. Since the default action is to schedule, I'll set it back to that. This allows you to file away messages that you're not ready to act on, but don't want to archive just yet. Now when I swipe to the right, it gives me three options for how I want to schedule. If I choose a time, I can use the scrolling selectors to pick a date and time. Additionally, I can choose in a few hours or tomorrow morning. Either of these options will move the message to a scheduled folder or a folder you choose and will return to the inbox after the time you specify. This can be really helpful if you have a lot of email in your inbox that you just can't act on yet, but you need to clear out some of the clutter. For now, I'll choose to schedule this message for a few hours. You also have all the same functionality from within a message as well. There's a button for archive, delete, and more. If I choose the more option, I can then schedule the email, move it out of the focused inbox, move it to a folder, or mark it unread. Choosing to move it out of the focused inbox will prompt to create a rule for all messages from this sender going forward. This is the same functionality that Apple and Google have built into their VIP and important inbox features, and allows Outlook to learn what's important to you. You can also move messages from the other section into the focused inbox and create rules for that as well. On the calendar tab, you have all the basic features that you would expect in a calendar. You can view in an agenda list by day or by week. For some reason, they've left out a month view. To create an appointment, you click in the time slot where you'd like to schedule your appointment. I mainly use my Exchange account for my calendar, and I noticed that the synchronization of the calendar wasn't nearly as good as the mail synchronization. Additionally, the synchronization for Exchange in general seemed to still need some work. My Gmail synced beautifully with no problems. Sometimes Exchange worked flawlessly as well, and other times there was a slight delay. Nothing to be too concerned about, though. On the File tab, you can see all the files from your emails broken out by email account and by date. From here, you can click directly on the file to view it. These pictures have already been buffered, which is why they're loading so quickly. If it's an attachment you haven't opened already, then you'll need to wait for it to download. From here, you have access to your typical share sheet, as well as cloud options and the ability to create a new email with the file attached. The People tab lists all the recent people that you've communicated with through email. You can click on a specific name and view the threaded conversations you've had with that person, and you can also see calendar appointments you have in common, as well as files you've received from them. Managing multiple emails at once is a breeze by simply long pressing on a message you'd like to select. You can then select other messages by tapping on them. Once you have your messages selected, you can move them, archive, delete, or flag. Microsoft has done a good job of leveraging the functionality of iOS 8. From the lock screen, you can swipe a message to the left to delete or archive it. Banner notifications are interactive as well. I did notice that neither of these interactions take effect until you open the app, though. So if you're using multiple devices to manage your email, this can get annoying when you see messages that should have been archived or deleted already still in your inbox. Just open the app on the other device and they'll disappear. Within the settings, you can customize a lot of things without it being overwhelming. 
Microsoft has included seven sounds to choose from for your mail notifications. The most frustrating thing about all these customizations is that you have to redo them on each device you set up. Seems like iCloud could copy these settings over, but maybe that's a limitation from Apple. After using this app for a short time, I'm not ready to say it's the best Gmail experience on iOS. However, if you're managing multiple accounts, and one of those happens to be Gmail, you should give it a shot. The clever files and people tabs are really helpful, and customizable swipes will make quick work of an out-of-control inbox. If you have any questions I didn't cover, leave them in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.